Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Today I'm going to review bolt rackets. What are bolt rackets, you might ask? They've been around for a while. The idea has been around for even longer. The founder Brett Bothwell actually approached a few major companies many years ago trying to get this kind of suspension technology sold to them as a patent. He owns a patent on it. And during that time, they didn't really buy it. Suspension technology in rackets is nothing new, uh, but he has found a way of doing it in a pretty innovative way that actually works. And I was very, very skeptical when I heard about these rackets, but I'm always open. I always want to try everything I can and I have time for. And so I reached out to Brett and he was kind enough to send me a couple of demos that I could test. So there is a demo program. If you are curious about these frames, check it out on the website. I'll put a link in the description. So I have been testing three models, 100L, B100 and B98 version two. What's different with the bolt rackets is the SIP strip. And to give you a better idea of how the SIP strip works, we'll look at this video from Bolt, how this, uh, this strip that can have different stiffnesses. It's actually like a spring system inside the racket. So this pretty much cancels out all the vibrations, which is why these rackets are very comfortable, even when you play an, a stiff racket at a pretty high tension with a full bed of poly. They still play pretty fine. So I did not notice any arm issues at all with these frames, which is why I think it's an interesting choice for you players out there who have an history of, of tennis elbow or other problems with your arm and you want a very comfortable tennis racket that still offers good power. So these rackets then really excel at that. The technology creates a nice pocketing feel in the string bed, which I didn't think would happen. I thought it would be very much of a trampoline effect, but it actually feels more like pocketing. And that's a, a sensation that many players like. It's kind of hard to quantify or, or see where it comes from, but some rackets, and you might know what I'm talking about, has this pocketing effect where you really feel the ball sink into the string bed in that nanosecond that it's actually in the string bed, but you feel it. And uh, I really like that sensation. Some other players do, not everyone does, but these rackets actually provide that thanks to the SIP strips. Interesting playtest for sure. Very powerful racket, I must say. There is a small trampoline effect, not as pronounced as on the Clash, but the SIP strips do have the effect of, of springing and, and getting some more power on the ball, and that can be a bit difficult to control at times. I would say I, I struggle more with the Clash rackets to control it than I do with these because these can also be, be played at higher tensions. I feel like they, they do perform well anyway and are comfortable still. So there's definitely something to the technology. I was very skeptical to the ice. It can hurt a bit when you see this kind of chamber on the side of the grommets where the sip strip is placed. But if you don't care so much how it looks and if you're not like a racket purist that needs your racket to have a perfect teardrop shape or whatever and then this racket is definitely something to be considered for players looking for power and comfort before we go further into the review i want to thank the sponsor of this video fuzzy yellow balls and their excellent product the singles playbook where you learn different patterns of play and strategies to use against opponents of varying styles whether it's pushers counter punchers or serving volleyers, for example. And, and each chapter in this booklet also comes with a accompanying video on a website. So it's actually a really immersive way of learning and understanding different strategies that you can use against different opponents. So check it out, the link is in the description. So the Bolt Rackets, how do they play? I play tested it together with a few different players, my father included, he's 66, two replaced knees, still wants to play tennis as much as he can. He has made a switch to the Fury Arma Pro 98, but he actually really considered these frames as well because he really liked how they feel. And he has been playing with a bunch of different, more famous brands like Wilson Ultra, Head Extreme, and uh, Yonix Eason. So he's tried all those frames to get more power because he used to play with the Blade 98. But these frames were very high on the list. He really liked them and he still keeps them in the bag, the 100 versions. So the 100 square inch versions was his favorite. I personally enjoyed the 98. I felt like I got good control, but still lots of power. I played pretty well with it, I must say. I mean, one of my hitting partners even said, I mean, you should make a switch to this racket, but it's easy to say that after one time or when you're playing well for like 45 minutes i still feel like i would want a bit more control from my rackets it's a very powerful frame i felt that i'm very connected to the ball so i can you know it works really well on drop shots and stuff like that uh, which i sometimes struggle with with the clash for example 
but for the power level it's a little bit much and I'm not a huge fan personally of any kind of trampolining in the string bed. I wouldn't say it's a lot, but it, it's there for sure. I mean, obviously you have the zip strips suspending and then shooting out the ball and it's very controllable and I think most players might not even notice it, but for me, a tennis nerd, a racket purist and who tries everything, it obviously, obviously becomes a little bit more of an issue in the long run. But really nice rackets, highly surprised. You know, I was ultra skeptical, uh, as I am, about kind of gimmicky stuff. It felt gimmicky when I read about it. But when you play with it, you understand what the whole idea is behind it. And I know this racket brand has a, a growing group of fans because you really feel like the comfort is there, the power is there, you can get good spin, you can string it with a full bed of poly and it's still fine because these strips actually handle most of the vibrations. Then the potential of this technology is, is quite vast because you can start manipulating like how the zip strip will flex, materials, softness and so on. Hopefully we will see more because there's, this is at least some kind of innovation happening instead of just changing the layup a little bit. I mean, the innovation in tennis rackets is usually the layup. What's happening inside the layup? Is there any kind of new material like in the Oxetic in head rackets? Can you you do something with a mold like in the new Yonex V course, for example, to to have extra aerodynamic properties or power and so on. So that's usually kind of a small uh, difference, but that that makes an impact on how you play. While these try to change how tennis rackets are perceived a bit, which I think is interesting and, and something I, I'll follow for sure. If you struggle with arm problems, you want power uh, or you just want something different something that that can give you good power and, and spin on your shots without the comfort issue check these out the bolt rackets website link in the description i also have a podcast with the founder brett bothwell on the tennis nerd podcast spotify itunes tennisnerd.net so you'll find it everywhere where you can get a more in-depth understanding of the journey that brett took with this brand and we also discuss other things like pickleball and you know if it's a threat to tennis and so on so if you're interested in this stuff check out the tennis nerd podcast what can i compare these rackets to it's quite difficult they kind of stand on their own uh, the 98 is maybe best compared to a clash 98 but in this case i would probably even prefer the the bolt racket because I, I felt a bit more connected to the string bed it's not like i dislike the clash that that much but it has that ultra flex creates even more of an inconsistency i think than the small trampoline effect that in these bolt rackets it's very hard to compare them to anything i mean the power level is is kind of like a pure arrow 98 on the 98 square inch racket i would say it's quite powerful for that head size and the hundreds as well so so they are kind of in the in a higher range of the of the category and in terms of specifications it's good to point out that the swing weights on all of these rackets were a little bit higher than i expected nothing that really made them sluggish or anything uh, but if you're looking for a very low swing weight might not be for you the ones i measured were in the like 330 range and uh, with strings of course my father didn't complain about them feeling sluggish or anything like that, but good to point that out in case you're worried. I'm sure with these smaller boutique brands, you can talk to them and get a lower swing weight sample. As you know, with quality control, there's always going to be a discrepancy, uh, which I talk about in almost every video. And possibly this, the zip strips makes it a bit more difficult to uh, have a low swing weight, similar to what Prokenix does with their... Um, with their micro beats moving around inside the racket. Okay, I hope I managed to give you an idea of how these play. The best way, as always, is to demo them, see how well you feel. And I'm very keen now to hear in the comments what you think about this brand. What do you think about these rackets? Is this something you could play with? I'm sure Brett is curious as well about what you all think. He's a very passionate tennis player and has this techie background to understand the production and, and design of these products. So I, I think he's a fascinating guy. I really enjoyed my conversation, which you can listen to on the Tennis Nerd Podcast. That's all for this Bolt Rackets review. If you need racket advice, want to read reviews, go to TennisNerd.net. That's where you'll find everything you need in tennis. And if you want to support Tennis Nerd and get extra content and a chat function with me, you go to Patreon.com slash Tennis Nerd. That is it. Have a nice day. And don't forget to play some tennis.